Thank you for joining us this morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are. I am Yop Ruangpam, Movement Strategy Implementation Specialist at the uh, Wikipedia Foundation and part of the Movement Strategy and Governance team. In my role on the team, I work to support our communities to make sure they have access to the opportunities uh, that enable, um, enable us all to effectively contribute to advancing movement strategy. Thank you everyone for joining us again. Um, our speakers for today, you might have read um, the, the program already, but I will announce our speakers again. And if I mention your name to our speakers, just please put your hand up um, and wave um, just in case. I know everyone, all of our speakers are uh, outstanding members of the community and probably need no introduction, but just in case. Um, uh, so Tony is here. Tony will be speaking this morning. Tony, a right. quick wave from you. Thank you. Um, Ivana is here. She'll also be speaking today. Ivana, thank you. Kanika, Kanika, can you wave for us, please? Awesome. Natalia, Natalia, please wave. All right, so this morning you'll be hearing from um, all of these amazing people um, about the work that um, that they've been doing that's very related to these concrete projects that are tied to movement strategy. Um, the, the movement strategy implementation, some of you might know, some might, may not know, but movement strategy implementation is actually already happening across various communities currently. Um, these projects are tangible, ongoing projects that demonstrate how, um, where, and when, and what ideas are truly implementable. The, in the session today, you'll hear from the people who are leading or co-leading um, on these projects, and you'll learn more about what movement strategy means in very practical terms. If you had previously asked yourself a question about how your community can start a project or what opportunities or resources are available to support you and your ideas we're hoping that you find some of those answers in our time together um, you'll hear a lot less from me and more from um, our amazing speakers today so listen out for the thoughts that the speakers will share about future goals on their projects i believe that that's probably a place where you might find some inspiration for opportunities to connect and collaborate. So I'll invite our first speaker this morning, Tony. Thank you for joining us. Over to you. Uh, hi. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Tony Listowski, a uh, longtime editor on uh, Wikipedia from 2010. And uh, uh, a part of that, I'm also board member of the user group Shared Knowledge. And Shared Knowledge this year started a new project that uh, is uh, connected with movement strategy. Uh, that project is initially for the minority uh, languages that we have in uh, Macedonia. That is the Romani language and a Romanian language. Uh, that are uh, small communities uh, between 10 to 30,000 of the uh, of uh, 30,000 speakers in, in the country. Uh, so we try uh, with this project and the movement strategy to to uh, finally build some of the editors uh, and to to train the editors of these uh, languages uh, uh, here in our country. So. We firstly started uh, like uh, making a, a server uh, with uh, Google Forms uh, to uh, see uh, how uh, they know uh, about Wikipedia, how are uh, they learn the language, if they uh, the language is uh, really spoken or, or not. Uh, I, or, and also uh, we uh, take uh, these uh, uh, forms to see if the uh, percentage of uh, how many people actually know to write on these languages. Because these languages are minority languages, like I said, and they are not included in the public uh, schools. So they often uh, uh, they uh, speak and they write, 
on other languages like Macedonian, Albanian, uh, and they are not included in the in the schools like uh, Romanian and Romani languages. Uh, so uh, they often lack, uh, like uh, they don't know how to uh, how to use the language in a written form. Uh, that's why uh, a part of that, uh, part of these languages, we also started with uh, Macedonian sign language uh, because these people are often neglected uh, in our communities. Uh, so uh, it is like only Macedonian language, but not Macedonian sign language. And this population uh, is actually uh, quite a lot in, uh, in our country, like five a thousand, uh, five to ten thousand people actually have uh, difficulties to speak or to hear, so they using sign language. Uh, so that's why we uh, we included this language in our uh, in, in our grant, uh, and uh, we started with uh, this community to work about uh, vi uh, creating videos uh, and uh, 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 with these videos to 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 bring uh, closer uh, the the language. So maybe uh, next slide is is uh, it's okay. Uh, uh, we uh, also uh, how uh, what uh, what do we learn so far? Uh, we learned that uh, under uh, these languages, I have a, a lot of dialects that are not included in the official script. Uh, and they they because we. Uh, we uh, we have uh, interviews with uh, members of these communities, and they speak that they don't have uh, 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 they don't have uh, uh, official dialects, but they are using dialects. Also, uh, Macedonian sign language community told us that they don't know uh, Macedonian language, although they are Macedonians. Uh, like they have uh, difficulties to speak and read or write on Macedonian. So now we have to, to involve these communities on uh, some other way in uh, our next uh, phase of the project. Uh, also, it is uh, uh, a very, uh, li uh, like a very, uh, a very uh, a problem that we face with these communities is that their lack of uh, uh, materials, like uh, materials in written, in digital form, like they often uh, use uh, uh, oral form, and they uh, they often uh, learn the language in oral form, not in the written form. Uh, so uh, we uh, we are working with our partners to uh, about next phase to to assist in finding and uh, 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 creating uh, materials uh, about next uh, uh, next uh, uh, phase. Uh, what uh, what we uh, what are our goals with this uh, project is actually uh, like I said in the first uh, first uh, uh, slide is that uh, we uh, now uh, it is like to creating a, 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 a community with editors to create uh, and these editors after that to create uh, a content that are relevant in these communities. Like we, uh, why, why to choose and to read uh, articles in um, Macedonian or Albanian or English uh, version, uh, and uh, even, uh, but uh, we uh, we are offering now them help uh, to to have uh, uh, to have uh, articles in their own language. Uh, 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 is also uh, uh, it is uh, like uh, we we, uh, we we plan to to have a long term uh, cooperation with these partners. Like uh, we have a partner from a uh, uh, one partner from every community. Like one partner from Armenian community, one partner from Romani uh, language community, and one partner from Macedonian sign language community. Uh, in, and that's it's like we are speaking like uh, not just uh, finishing this project, but uh, also to, to have a, like a, a fair ground to to continue the the uh, the, uh, the project with them in the in the future, not just uh, 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 with uh, uh, clearly with Romanian and Romani uh, Wikipedia, but uh, just to to include the, the, the partners in our uh, own project in uh, Macedonian Wikipedia. Uh, 
also uh, uh this is the first time uh it's like offering them to to have like a written form of their own language to have like uh to 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 to, to have on some on some space this is like short uh, introduction of the project so if you have a question so please bill okay thank you so much tony as you know your uh, work is always um i think it has always fascinated me um there are some questions that i see in the chat already and so i'll raise okay. this first question um he says uh, this is from zico zico says great what tony says concrete a concentrate on relevant content um he called it community content planning all oh, right that's um, yes. not a question yes say, yes but yeah yes, he it's it, advice yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah, we know we know we speak with our partners to to have a concrete uh, like article uh, plan of articles like uh, article uh, list. Uh, after that, in uh, in next phase, to be created uh, these articles, not to be created by our uh, by our side, but uh, but uh, from our partners. So yes. It's... Okay. Um, I see someone here mentions you can't see the slides. Um, apologies for that, just small technical hitches, but we will be sharing the slides following um, our session. Um, right. Do we have any other questions? I learned that some some of us are still sorting out interpretations in feed loop, um, so that might delay some of the questions coming in. Um, it's... Uh, Okay, you can't see his name. Is okay. Our, our speaker from uh, Macedonia this morning is Tony Christovsky. Someone's asking for your name. Yeah, yeah, yeah I see. Yeah, I see now. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, Tony. Um, perhaps some questions will come uh, come through yes, specifically yes. for you, and so we we could just circle back. Um, Late, uh, maybe at the at the end of our session, if we have a little more time. Um, thank you, as always, for your amazing amazing work and supporting communities that are so disadvantaged. Um, all right, uh, on to our next speakers for now, um, Ivana and Kanika. Ivana and Kanika, um, I guess who's going to be presenting? Uh, for you. They will both be presenting and you can throw questions at both of them and you can both answer at any time. Yes. Yes. Hello, so everyone. Will you be presenting? Okay. Yes, we can start. So, hello, everyone. Okay. I'm Ivana Modarevic from Wikimedia Serbia. I work as Program and Community Manager uh, at Wikimedia Serbia and I'm here uh, today with Kanika Tamai uh, from Wikimedia Deutschland. We are going to talk about our collaboration uh, within the Wikimedia Accelerator Unlock. Uh, we can move to our next slide. Uh, so uh, to give you just a bit of a background um, on our collaboration and on this accelerator, um, uh, when Unlock was created, uh, we, uh, I mean, Wikimedia uh, Deutschland was thinking about uh, our movement. So our movement is diverse and our, mo our movement is a big and multicultural, but we still face some challenges in terms of um, underrepresented communities who wants to contribute and access the free knowledge. So we still have some um, obstacles that we want to uh, uh, change and uh, we definitely think that uh, innovation and not just technical one but also social ones are the crucial for mastering these challenges and uh, achieving the knowledge equity um, within the unlock we are searching for pathways that can actually drive and nurture uh, these innovative capacities and also create sustainability and stay relevant so um, to be more concrete, um, uh, what is uh, Unlock all about? We can move to the next slide. Uh, so Unlock is actually uh, um, a project that promotes innovative ideas and 
uh, projects that break down, uh, break down the social and technical barriers that are actually preventing people for, from accessing and contributing to the free knowledge. This is not um, a typical and standard grant proposal. <laughs> Uh, grant uh, um, uh, project, right? It is actually uh, a program that supports change makers and activists and technologists and creative minds, but by listening to their uh, specific needs um, uh, for their projects uh, and uh, giving them uh, the set of coaching and trainings and mentorship um, activities that they can go through over the course of um, several months. Uh, we are actually looking for, for people outside of the movement and also from the movement. Why we are doing this is because we are searching from, uh, for this different perspectives and uh, we are looking forward to uh, involving more uh, people to the movement and also learning from them uh, and learning about these new angles um, uh, from people outside of the free knowledge community. Um, this is a program that has been launched by Wikimedia Deutschland in 2020. And so far, uh, there has been two editions of the program. Um, uh, 10 projects were supported and um, also uh, 80 applications were uh, received. Uh, as for the program in 2020, we do have some uh, new things we want to share with you. We can move to our next slide. Uh, so um, we created uh, new alliances, Wikimedia Deutschland and Wikimedia Serbia um, joined forces, as we like to say it, and also created a partnership with Impact Hub Belgrade in order to co-designed um, the Unlock program, not just in terms of creating the call for, for projects and uh, selection process, but also creating the uh, set of um, specific trainings and specific uh, uh, mentorship program uh, project needs. Um, in this year, we also have this regional focus, uh, meaning that um, uh, we are focusing on German speaking area, but also Western Balkans. And this is a good thing for us because we are uh, diversing uh, the program because we are giving the opportunities for, for people from less developed countries to join. And also uh, we are uh, giving them opportunity uh, for peer-to-peer -peer exchange uh, for them to learn from one another. In 2020, uh, we, uh, we accepted and supported seven projects. You can uh, see uh, this on the link in the presentation. If someone is not seeing the presentation, they will see it afterwards. Uh, but just to give you a glimpse of uh, the project ideas we are supporting, I'm just um, uh, adding two examples. The one is Inclusio. Uh, Inclusio is the um, program that um, uh, this is actually uh, going to uh, gather the human um, uh, sorry, so this is going to gather human uh, generated audio descriptions of visual content to the blind and visually impaired. So we are overcoming the gap for people who are blind and cannot access uh, visual content. Also, Max Passe is a um, project that is fostering political sen uh, sensitive translation and by creating the uh, crowdsourcing platform um, and uh, they are looking forward to uh, create this sens uh, sensitivity in translation. Um, so far, we have been doing this. We are in the middle of uh, the project, so we are working with teams and we are learning a lot. Uh, and also, um, we are facing some challenges, but this second part will uh, be explained by Kanika in more detail. Yes, um, thanks a lot, Ivana, for the introduction. And hi to everyone, I'm Kanika, and I would like to share with you some open questions or challenges we are trying to address. Um, we certainly acknowledge the challenges we know as well as those we don't know yet, and we are testing and experimenting a lot um, in this collaboration since there's no blueprint or, as we call it, recipe um, with regard to how to set such an innovating um, driving program within our movement with regards to how to really implement movement strategy um, to get to where we want to be. So one of the open questions that kind of we're dealing with is how to achieve knowledge equity um, with 
social and technical innovations, how to create an environment where emergent and marginalized communities as uh, participants, as co-designers, as experts within the Unlock project can devise their own technologies, system, and social, social structures. Um, I think that's really much related to the contextualization. So how do we best contextualize such a program that invites all participants to collaborate and strengthen their innovative capacities? Um, but it's not only about this kind of technical or techy um, side of innovation we want to achieve with Unlock. So I think this collaboration with Wikimedia Serbia and Impact Hub also you know, put us to some challenges. So how to strengthen cross-affiliate collaboration? What are more creative ways and innovative ways, ways that can seed power and generate more balanced partnership? And how do we collaborate with people and institutions like Impact Hub that are not from the immediate open knowledge movement? Um, next slides, please. Um, so these were the challenges and what we have learned so far is that um, uh, the bunch of different perspectives into our program um, and therefore also into the movement, which can be definitely beneficial. Um, we, I think, having been working towards narrowing down the power gap between this or in this collaboration and um, finding ways of collaborating that um, value equally the resources each of us bring in. So it does not mean that um, it does not mean equal workload because it would be unfair. Um, but it rather really closely look into what capacities, what roles, what needs each parties. So in this collaboration has. Um, it has been challenging um, also in communication. And I think this is a big learning um, for us to how do we best communicate into the movement? So explaining what is Unlock, what is an acceleration innovation driving program, as well as to new communities outside the movement. So what is free knowledge and what is knowledge equity? Um, and also one of the key learning is obviously that Unlock is not a program about producing ready-made innovations and then just bring it into to the communities. That's not the goal. Um, it's more like, you know, an iterative way of working on something new, which means that we need to be ready for taking risks and also willing to accept that some of the ideas um, may become successful and some may not. Um, we are still in the process, so more learnings will be shared and more learnings to come, so we are looking for this. And um, for updates, just follow us on our social media account. So there's an unlocked Twitter as well as an unlocked LinkedIn account. I hope you can see the link in the chat um, as well. Um, the last slide, yeah. what are our yeah, future goals? So I think there are two points that we would like to mention. So first of all, we would love to see this program the Unlock program to really become freely adaptable, changeable, depending on the geographic, cultural, and economic context within our movement. And we also would love to think big and um, yeah, kind of creating more structures and resources to drive innovation within our movement, like, you know, building an ecosystem to innovate in free knowledge. I just um, add the link here to, um, our thought and ideas and kind of first mapping of how to do so. Um, so yeah, go uh, through uh, this, this kind of idea and um, yeah, send us some feedback on that. But in, in some, I think what we would love to see is obviously a movement-wide commitment to recommendation nine. Um, so innovate in free knowledge. Um, I think we would love to see more incentives. And um, I think that we would love to figure out ways um, and you know, approaches how to involve movement stakeholders as well as other mission aligned organizations. So you know, overcoming this kind of not invented here syndrome. Um, okay. yeah, yeah, I think that's it. <laughs> thank Fantastic, you. thank you so much. Kanika, thank you, Vanna, for sharing um, this amazing work. Um, it's always interesting when um, we come up with innovations, but innovations that are homegrown are definitely interesting. Um, in the interest of time, we will go run to our next speaker, but 
sorry, just a minute before that, there are two questions, um, Kanika and Ivana, if you can answer those um, sort of together. Um, who runs Impact Hub Belgrade and then how many members does Wikimedia Serbia have? If we can answer that um, quickly in, in a minute. Yeah, so okay, I can okay. answer. Yeah, you go. Okay. Uh, uh, we have around 200 uh, members in our organization, a little bit over it, 2030. Yeah, and okay. I think related to Impact Hub Belgrade, so it's in kind of a, a, in an association in Belgrade, so they have, yeah, probably founders and co-founders running. Um, so it's 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 a kind of yeah, and then an association as far as I know, and it's also part of a global network. So there are many many Impact Hubs in the world, like you know many many shutters. Um, within our movement. So I think we could also share some link um, about Impact Hub here as well. Okay, all right, fantastic. Um, just a quick note that for those who might want to um, pick up the slides so you can find those links that are being shared, you can find them on our program on Meta. Um, I'll share some more information on that as we wrap up, but going on to our next speaker this morning, last but definitely not the least, Natalia. Uh, we'll share about her project. Thank you, Natalia. Thank you, and hello, everyone. It's amazing to be here at Wikimedia with you. It's always, it's always so exciting to to attend Wikimedia. I will be talking about the project we are doing in Wikimedia Poland uh, around providing for safety and uh, inclusion. And this project comes from a thought that if you really want to have safe and inclusive communities and projects, we need to take care of people who actually work towards the safety. And in Wikimedia projects, uh, we rely on safety with uh, volunteer functionaries, usually those are admins, uh, who take care of very difficult and complex cases. They react to harassment, uh, they uh, work on conflict resolution, uh, they react to vandalisms, and yet they do this work without uh, per training or preparation to do it, which is if you think of the importance and the sensitivity and the difficulty of this work, it's kind of surprising that we don't prepare them to do it. And what we also don't have in the movement is we don't, in the movement, we don't have a culture of support and consultation and a network of peer support built around those, those roles. And uh, this leads to two kinds of situations. One of them is that admins who know that they don't really know how to handle specific situation, especially long going conflict situations, and they don't feel that they have the tools to do it, and they know that they will be heavily criticized for their mistakes, uh, they tend to kind of not uh, interact with those kind of situations, which on one hand, makes the situations unresolved and uh, and hurting community health. And on the other hand, it uh, puts a lot more load on the admins who still work with that. And uh, the, uh, the solution we came up with is using a peer support framework uh, to help admins to both gain the skills that they need, both in terms of their own resilience to stress and harassment and in terms of them um working with specific problems giving them soft skills to to tackle them and also creating a peer support uh, group for them so that they can talk about the challenges uh, learn from each other support each other in uh, in different um, areas we will be having a series of meetups online meetups which will end with a admin conference uh live hopefully uh, during which we will be giving expert training to our functionaries in Polish Wikipedia and um, pro and supporting like peer support between them and facilitating it. Uh, and we hope that in the end they will be ready to better serve the communities. They will be safe from burning out. And burning out is a big problem in um, Wikimedia communities especially that burning out is something that affects the people who care the most. So if we don't take care of burnouts, we, we lose the most precious of our volunteers. 
and uh, we hope that uh, in the end uh, we will be able to build like know better how to create peer support networks and that they maybe will be possible to use in other places of the movement and in other groups and that we will have healthy communities supported by well-prepared people uh, to do so and uh, I was so very cautious about time that I think that's a lot left and I would be super happy to talk about it uh, and ask any questions both here on the movement strategy forum uh, I could talk about it uh, so um, okay Thank you so much, Natalia. But yes, we have so much more time now, which is really great. Um, we can um, sort of go go back and ask a few more questions. But um, I'll throw one question at you, Natalia, um, just to give us a little more context in understanding um, sort of the needs of editors with, with um, and helping them find those safe spaces um, to, yeah, well, helping them find those safe spaces. Um, as I recall, your work is sort of uh, building on foundational research that has already been done. Would you mind sharing with us some of the biggest findings from that research that um, sort of spurred um, and led to your project kicking off? Uh, thank you for this question because it's uh, really important to know. So uh, we had interviews and, um, and surveys among admins. We are still collecting, collecting the data and structuring it. Uh, but what we found out is that the people who actually work on addressing harassment often become victims of harassment themselves, which is, if you think of it, uh, very difficult, especially in terms of, for example, female admins who can also be targets of harassment outside of this role. This is a huge burden, but also male admins and any other groups. So this is one thing that if someone wants to address and react on harassment, they may become victims themselves. And the other thing that we found that there is a significant level of stress related to taking care of community health and safety, and that the, um, and that the admins don't necessarily know uh, how to handle the stress in a way that wouldn't uh, damage the, well, I dare to say, mental health and to, and to have resilience to, uh, to uh, work on that. So those are our findings. The finding that uh, very pleasantly surprised me, and, I'm, and I didn't expect that, but I'm very happy that this is what we found, is that the admins basically have a feeling that their work is recognized in the communities so that uh, they can actually uh rely on that uh yeah so uh i think this is what we Very found good. awesome there's a question in the chat i'll ask that question so you can answer it but when we come back tony i would have a question for you um so we can come back and learn a little more from your work uh but some uh, sorry i can't see the name clearly in chat but the question is um which will such efforts be taken globally that is on all projects. Um, probably re-echoing a question I've thrown at you previously, um, Natalia. Mm, I haven't heard the, uh, the last your last sentence. Could you please repeat yeah. if it was addressed to me? <laughs> yes, yes. The question the question in chat here is, um, you know, whether such efforts will be taken globally. That is on all projects, and there's some thought sort of buttressing that point, how important uh, safe, safe culture is, um, but it's not easy. Um, and, you know, learning the best ways to address um, aggressive behavior. Um, but the key question is, will such efforts be taken globally? Well, hopefully, because at the end of the project, we'll be providing a report and some or good practices that we found out and that we already did. And I hope that it will inspire and be rebuilt in different communities. Uh, and that in the end, we will have a safer and kinder movement. And my uh, POV is that we cannot have a good movement without taking care of how we feel in it. So I really hope that it will uh, spark in different places in the movement. All right. 
Yes, we do hope it does spark. And, it, it, you know, as you're listening to um, Natalia share what's happening, feel free to connect. Like we said, the ideas today are meant to, the, the projects that are shared today are meant to also inspire and motivate us. Um, so if this sounds like a project you'd like to take up and um, translate a seed happen in your community, um, feel free to connect and, um, and get it happening. Tony, I have one question for you. Um, on, on the project, you're working on a research, uh, your project is still at that research phase. Um, and Kirill, who's um, your co-project lead on this, shared in the chat that you'll be sharing the details of that research. But I'm curious if there's one piece of the research that you wouldn't mind sharing with us right now. What's the most um, interesting or the most encouraging thing that you're beginning to find from, from the research? Uh I think that's uh, that will be from the Macedonian Sign Language community because uh, that uh, that fact that uh, they they are not using Macedonian language in uh, their like in they don't understand it actually surprised me and give give us uh, like uh, idea and opportunity to use different models to to bring the knowledge to to this community in other way. Uh, also, we need to think uh, during this month, uh, be, uh, we have some ideas uh, how this community to be included in the next phase. Uh, uh, that, uh, that fact uh, actually surprised me. I learned uh, uh, completely new information uh, from uh, the interview and the uh, survey. So this is like... Uh, uh, I think it will be good for us, good for them, uh, because we will bring something completely new for this community, which is often, like like I said, is often neglect from state authorities, from the general public. And about Natalia, I'm looking forward to this report to read. It's actually, yes, it's very nice to, to, to have a finally like somebody to 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 think about uh, admin health uh, and uh, how how we are feeling because i'm i'm also in the position of admin so this is very nice yeah, yeah. all right thank you um, thank you so much thank you tony thank you natalia um Kanika Ivana, would you like to share something with us quickly in the last, um, in, in 30 seconds before I wrap up? Um, we have about a minute to go. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, but my outro is super short. So just a quick throw if you'd like to share something with um, uh, the people listening. Do you want to share something? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing yet. That, that comes a little bit out of the blue, but um, I mean, we we are in 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 the middle, like in the process, and of course of the program, and I think um, we can see um, many ideas that um, are progressing right now, and maybe just a sneak peek. Um, I think the program is now half time. We will have a further look on it, and um, by the end of October we will have like you know the final presentation that we would love to invite you to join obviously so yeah stay tuned all right that's awesome so thank you to everyone who has joined us this morning the conversations have been rich i've loved listening to um our project partners please feel free to find the slides on the program those are shared um, and a lot of the details you'd like to catch up on are on those slides thank you and thanks to everyone for joining us um, this morning as well. Um, sorry, just to also say that you can reach out to the Movement Strategy and Governance team to discuss any inspiring ideas that you might have for a Movement Strategy Implementation Project um, in your community. Um, we're happy to support, and as you can see from um, the, the projects that are currently ongoing, the strategy focus of making sure that we're supporting whether it's underserved um, typically underrepresented communities but emerging communities as well it's a big focus for the movement strategy and governance team that equity piece um, is something we harp on as much as possible so make sure to shine a light on your community by bringing your thoughts and your ideas for projects um, 
uh, to, to the spotlight. Thank you very much, Tony. Thank you very much, Ivana. Love you, <laughs> um, uh, Natalia. Love